I would like to give the word to uh, Mr. Lagarda from SOS Racismo and, um, and who's going to talk about uh, well, the uh, aforementioned uh, Vidasoa River and that uh, border crossing. Border crossing. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, primo di tutto, grazie a tutti, uh, in speciale alla Fondazione per fare possibile di essere qui. Um, I know that the project had like a positive highlight, but what I'm going to talk about is not that positive. I'm sorry. But I will try to make it light. <laughs> um, as I've mentioned, I'm from the Basque country, that it's been mentioned before that uh, I'm going to talk about the Basque border. Um, there is a Basque poem written 50 years ago in 1973. It's called uh, Mendian Galdus which in Basque means to those who got lost in the mountain. And it's, um, it's a cry of uh, African people dying in our Basque, Basque surroundings. Uh, as I've said, it's almost 50 years ago when it was written, but it could have been written just today. Uh, just last year, in, uh, in 2021, 1,680 people died, uh, at least, in the Mediterranean Sea. But that number uh, gets higher if we take it into account that many uh, died even before getting to the Mediterranean during the African routes, and especially during the uh, desert. But that number should also be higher if we consider that uh, migrants also die once they reach the European Union. As you've mentioned before, uh, I'm going to talk about inner borders inside the European Union. Um, I come from San Sebastian. I'm not sure if you will know it. It's in the Basque Country, uh, in the north uh, coast. It's a coastal little city in the north of the uh, Iberic Peninsula. And it's very, very close from Irún, which is the other city that uh, Katerina mentioned. Uh, both are in the in the region of and as uh, they already explained you uh, there is a river a river called Soa with a few bridges that uh, within a walking distance you can get to Endaya, which is another another uh, little city but which already belongs to the French state um, as I've said, it's a walking distance, and people usually cross that bridge, those bridges for many reasons, like many work on one side and go to the other back home. I've crossed that uh, many times just to go to the beach. And for instance, not those bridges, but I crossed that border yesterday just to get to the airport to come here, so it's not such a big deal. And I've never been stopped there. But the thing is that I am white, and that's why I've never been stopped there. Uh, if they assume, um, by they I mean uh, the French police forces, if they assume that you are coming from Africa, you will face a uh, de facto migration control. There. And you've mentioned it before, but how is it possible, right? Uh, both Spain and France are both part of the European Union and they are part of the Schengen space, so such a control shouldn't exist. Well, uh, I'm sure all of you will remember that in 2015 there was a terrible... Uh, terrorist attack in Paris in the Bataclan shooting. When that happened, France declared the state of emergency and that state of emergency allowed uh, uh, that control to be there. Uh, the thing is that uh, that control should have lasted no more than six months. It was supposed to be temporary. Uh, it was in order to guarantee the national security of France, but it's been renewed systematically since then and we are now in 2022. Uh, the French Council of State uh, re uh, yeah, renews it systematically, even if it's prohibited by the judgment of the Court of Justice in the European Union. Um, let's be clear with one thing. Uh, that, that border control is not about terrorism. Uh, it's based on a technicality, but it's a migration control. Uh, and as you all know, the first article of the Schengen Code states that such uh, control should not be, should, shouldn't exist. And on top of that, on top of the, the, the existence itself of the control, the practices there are not legal either. Because I've said before that I've never been stopped there and uh, everything on if they assume that you are coming from Africa, but how do they assume that? It's by racial profiling. And that racial profiling blocked many, many people uh, in the city of Hirun. I would also like to add that from a just utilitarian point of view or just on a practical note, it doesn't 
avoid people getting into France. It just makes them more vulnerable. It violates their human rights and it puts them in even a bigger risk. But it, it doesn't work as a, as a blocking of the migration there. What it does is a lot of them get stuck in Irun. And we are really, really uh, thankful that on both sides of the rivers, both in Irun and in Endai, there are organizations and especially citizen networks, just regular citizens who organize themselves uh, to assist these people in need. And they provide an assistance that is not provided by the public administrations in general. So we are really, really uh, thankful to them, and especially to Irungo Arreras Area. It's the uh, welcoming citizen network from Irun uh, with whom we work closely. Uh, but as I've said, uh, the control doesn't actually work. It only violates the, the human rights of these humans that I would like to highlight that they are humans, even if sometimes it seems to be forgotten. Uh, and it is not a crime to look for a better and, a, and safer conditions. It's a, actually a fundamental human right. But some of them uh, still want to cross, so they look for other alternatives, and they are very dangerous, and especially the ones involving the river. I would say I'm a fair swimmer, and I'm not sure if I will dare to cross that river swimming, even if I kind of know it. So uh, still many of them, out of desperation, they cross it. Uh, and I would like to remember Ibrahim Diallo and Abdurrahman Ba. Uh, Ibrahim was from Senegal and Abdurrahman was from Guinea Conarchy, both of them who died in the river this year. But those not, are not the only names that I would like to remember. I would also like to mention Tesfit Temside, Abdullahi Koulibaly, Yaya Karamoko, Sohaibo Villa, Mohamed Kamal, Faisal Kamadouche, and a seventh non-identified person, all of them who died in 2021. Uh, let's hope that these are the last names in this terrible, terrible list. But sometimes hope is not enough. So I would like to take advantage of this of me being here to please beg every single one of to do actually something, something to take practical action so that they are indeed the last human beings dying at the Bidasova. Thank you very much. Today, thank you.